Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's time for story time once again. I do hope you all had a lovely weekend playing with your friends and your family, and that you're ready to listen to some Christmas stories. It's not very many days now before Christmas, so I thought I would start off with a little rhyme. It's called the Christmas, A Christmas Tree for Pooh. And then I'm going to read you a Christmas story from this book all about Winnie the Pooh. It's Disney's Winnie the Pooh Christmas Treasury. I read one of the stories last week, and now I'm going to read another one. But first, we're going to do a little poem, and it's called A Christmas Tree for Pooh. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, standing in the snow, would you like to come with me? Okay, then off we'll go. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, with your boughs outspread, a lovely vision you will be, decked out in green and red. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, wrapped in chains of light, now you're dressed for all to see, topped with a star so bright. And I bet you children are probably going to be involved decorating a Christmas tree at your house soon, if you haven't already done it. Now here's the story. It's called Pooh's Jingle Bells. Hmm, I love Christmas Eve, said Winnie the Pooh, patting his tummy. Tomorrow, my, stuff, my stocking will be full of brand new honey pots. Presents are fun, said Christopher Robin. But getting presents isn't the most important thing about Christmas, you know. Pooh scratched behind his ear. I suppose there are other things about Christmas, he said, though he couldn't remember what they were at the moment. Christmas is a time for thinking of others and helping, said Christopher Robin. Pooh thought about Santa delivering presents all over the world. Nobody needs more help than Santa, he cried. If only I had a sleigh, we could help him deliver presents in it. Good thinking, said Christopher Robin. Let's go see if anyone has a sleigh that we can use. They found Piglet outside his door, sweeping snow and singing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. That's an idea, said Pooh. What is, asked Piglet. A one-horse open sleigh, replied Pooh. That ought to get us to the North Pole. The North Pole, cried Piglet. Yes, said Pooh. Christopher Robin says Christmas is about helping others, and nobody needs more help than Santa. What a grand idea, cried Piglet. I'd like to go, too, but I have to finish clearing my walk. Oh, we can help you with that, said Christopher Robin. Together they shoveled until the snow was piled up neatly on both sides of Piglet's path. Now, let's go see if Kanga knows anything about a sleigh, said Pooh. Oh, cried Piglet. Jingle bells are just what we need for our one-horse open sleigh. A sleigh? A sleigh, sang Roo. Where is it? Well, we don't exactly have one yet, explained Pooh. But when we do, we're going to take it to the North Pole and help Santa deliver his presents. What a nice idea, said Kanga. Do you have a sleigh we can borrow? asked Christopher Robin. No, said Kanga, but Tigger's coming over soon. I'm sure he'll let you borrow his. Now come in and warm yourselves. I have baked some nice Christmas cookies. Can we help you make them? asked Pooh. Certainly, dear, said Kanga. Together they sifted flour and spices, then they stirred in butter and honey, and soon the delicious smell of cookies was coming from Kanga's kitchen. Mmm, yummy, said Tigger as he bounced through the front door. 
For a while, the cookies made everyone forget about helping Santa. But Piglet suddenly remembered. Tigger, we need to borrow your sleigh so we can help Santa deliver his presents. When it comes to helping Santa, Tiggers are the best, cried Tigger. Everyone piled onto Tigger's sled. Roo jingled his jingle bells. Everyone sang, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. They swooshed down Kanga's hill toward Rabbit's house. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. The wind blew and the snowflakes flew. Everyone laughed and shouted. They were having such a good time together. Are we at the North Pole yet? asked Roo, as the sled scrunched to a stop. We've been going down for quite some time, said Pooh thoughtfully. It seems to me the North Pole must be more up. Rabbit Al and Eeyore were gathered in front of Rabbit's house. The North Pole, exclaimed Rabbit. You're not even close. Besides, said Eeyore, it's time to decorate the big pine tree. Or did you forget? He held up a long cranberry chain, as you can see here. Oh, yes, cried Christopher Robin. Together, they hung candy canes and popcorn balls. Then they stood back and admired their beautiful tree, as you can see, all the different things they put on it. What about Santa, asked Piglet, nudging Pooh. Oh, cried Pooh, we've got to get to the North Pole to help Santa before it's too late. And you plan to reach the North Pole in this, asked Al, pointing to Tigger's sled. Well, yes, said Pooh. Well, then you'll need some locomotion, said Al. A loco what, asked Pooh. A horse, perhaps, said Al. Oh, said Pooh. We forgot that part. Eeyore looked at Eeyore. I mean, everyone looked at Eeyore. Don't look at me, said Eeyore. You'd be a great horse, cried Christopher Robin. It's a simple matter of attaching him to the sleigh correctly, said Rabbit. He tied Eeyore to the sled with ropes. Not too tight around the middle, Eeyore said, sighing. The perfect one-horse open sleigh, exclaimed Al, admiring Rabbit's work. Roo jingled his jingle bells. Eeyore puffed and pulled and everyone sang. Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Eeyore had trotted quite happily quite some distance when Christopher Robin noticed that the sun was sinking low in the sky. I've been thinking, he said, if we go all the way to the North Pole, we might not have time to give our presents to one another. Oh, no, cried Pooh. Maybe getting presents is not the most important thing about Christmas, but giving is important. Oh, dear, said Piglet. I'm sure Santa wouldn't want us to forget that. Keep singing that nice jingly tune, said Eeyore, and I'll have us around the hundred acre wood in no time. Together they laughed and sang and jingled their way from house to house, delivering presents to all of their friends. We're helping Santa. We're helping Santa, said Roo. Oh, we are, said Pooh. We're Santa's ha helpers after all. And that is the end of this particular story in this book all about Pooh's Christmas. Now the next story I'm going to read is about Thomas. You know the Thomas train stories? I read some of them to you before. This one though is Thomas's Christmas delivery. Another Christmas story. Pop! 
puff, puff, peep, peep, snowflakes were just starting to fall as Thomas climbed the steep, steep hill. It was Christmas Eve, and Thomas wanted to be back in his shed with his friends. The engine's stockings were going to be hung soon, and Thomas didn't want to miss that. But Thomas was a really useful engine, and he had three very important deliveries to make, and they could not wait. First was a freight car full of food to deliver to the community hall. All of the island of Sodor had been invited to come for a big celebration tomorrow, and there would be enough food for everyone. When he arrived, there were many people around to help unload. Everyone was in a jolly mood, and the work went quickly. Suddenly, there was a shout. Mrs. Cundley had slipped on the snow, snowy walk and dropped a bowl of cranberry sauce. She was not hurt. In fact, she looked very funny covered in sticky red goo from head to toe. She laughed along with everyone else. When she was back on her feet, she walked over to Thomas and gave him a sticky pat. Merry Christmas, Thomas, she said and she went inside to clean up. We're done, cried a workman. Off with you, Thomas. You have a lot to do yet. Merry Christmas. Peep, peep, whistled Thomas, and off they went into the gently falling snow. His next stop was at the big school on the hill. Some of the children were unable to go home for the holidays, and Thomas had many parcels to deliver so that they wouldn't feel lonely. The snow was coming down a little harder, but he still had plenty of time to get back to the engine shed and go to sleep before Father Christmas came. When Thomas pulled up near the entrance of the school, some of the teachers came out and helped to organize the unloading of the packages. The children were having a snowball flight. Splat! A red-haired boy in a green coat threw a large snowball that hit Thomas right in the side of his boiler. Peep! Thomas laughed. Everyone was helping to unload Thomas now, and he waited until the red-haired boy was standing right beside him. Thomas let out a blast of steam. Whoosh! The steam loosened the snow on Thomas's roof, which slid off and landed right on the red-haired boy's head. You got me, Thomas, laughed the boy. Soon he was off again. This delivery was the most important of all. Thomas had presents to bring to the children's hospital in Vickerstown. All of the children were counting on Thomas to make sure that their Christmas was a happy one. The snow was falling faster and faster and was starting to get deep in some places. Thomas had to carefully, had to go very carefully so as not to get stuck. He kept telling himself, the children are counting on me, and this will show Father Christmas what a really useful engine I am. Soon Thomas could see the lights of the hospital through the falling snow. As he pulled up, there were children at the windows cheering his arrival. You can see all of them at the windows here. While the doctors and nurses helped to unload all of the parcels, Sir Topham Hatt came out of the hospital and walked right up to Thomas. Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt, I have a very important job for you. There's a little boy with a broken leg who lives in the last house before the tunnel to Balahu. It is snowing too hard for his mother to come get his toy train. I need you to take this up to his house. Of course, peeped Thomas. I am a really useful engine. But, sir... 
My stocking wasn't hung before I left. Father Christmas will forget me. Nonsense, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt. Father Christmas will be as proud of you as I am. So Thomas headed off again. By now, the wind was howling all around him, and there was so much snow blowing that it was very hard to see. Thomas for once wished he had a snowplow as he moved slowly up the track. Suddenly, the wind dropped and there was no more snow. He had missed the house altogether and had pulled into the tunnel. Uh-oh. He stopped and started rolling slowly backward until he could see the lights of the house next to the tunnel. Peep, 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 he whistled again and again, afraid he wouldn't be heard over the wind. At last, the boy's mother came hurrying from the house, tightly wrapped in a long scarf. Thomas could see the boy in the doorway waving. Thank you, Thomas, he cried. You are my favorite engine. Then the boy and his mother went back inside and closed the door against the storm. Slowly, 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 Thomas made his way home. He worried that Father Christmas might not be able to find the engine shed in the storm. When he finally got back to his shed, it wasn't very late at night. The Christmas tree was still lit, and all the engine stockings, including Thomas's, hung in a row. Thomas was so tired, he was asleep in an instant. He dreamed that he had some presents in his stocking when the morning came. Good morning, Thomas. Merry Christmas, peeped Percy. Thomas woke with a start. He looked down. There was his stocking, and there was a note sticking out of it, and it said, Dear Thomas, thank you for being so kind and helpful. You are a really useful engine. The note wasn't signed, but Thomas thought he knew who it was from. Then he looked in his stocking, and it was full to the top of the very thing he wanted most, which in his case is coal, because Thomas is a steam engine, and he needs coal to be burned in his engine so he can run. So that is the end of this story of Thomas and Friends and his Christmas delivery. Yeah, just a little sip of water before I go on, because sometimes reading makes one thirsty. Now this is a story, it's called The Very fairy princess who sparkles in the snow. This is a, a book that was written by Julie Andrews and Emma Walton Hamilton. And it's just a nice sparkly story about a little girl who's going to be in a school theatrical. There she is. Apparently she loves to sing. And she's apparently very good at singing. Hi, I'm Geraldine, and I'm a fairy princess. It's just a feeling I have inside, something sparkly that's hard to explain. Like all fairy princesses, I spend a lot of time caring for my subjects and making them feel happy. Fairy princesses try to spread joy and wonder wherever and whenever they can. Speaking of wonder, we're having a Winter Wonderland Festival at our school. There will be ice sculptures, arts and crafts, a bake sale, and even sleigh rides. Best of all, there's going to be a concert, and I get to see, sing with the chorus. Fairy princesses are at their sparkliest when expressing themselves in a song. I just know that Mr. Higginbottom, our music teacher, is going to choose me to sing the solo. He always says I'm the most enthusiastic singer in our school. So far he hasn't announced his choice, so I'm trying to make his job easier. 
fairy princesses know how hard it is to remember all the details. During rehearsal, I step out just a bit and sing in my best voice. Mr. Higginbottom reminds me that many voices in a chorus need to sound like one. At lunchtime, I stroll past his office door. I sing a happy tune while pretending to tie my shoe. He waves, but he keeps working at his desk. At recess, I stand underneath his window and sing my loudest. I guess the playground is so noisy that he doesn't hear me. Sounds like she's auditioning for the starring role to sing the song. The next day, Mr. Higginbottom tells us that a professional singer is coming from the city to be our guest soloist. He says she will be a big draw for the concert. I think it sounds like a big drag. Even a fairy princess can forget her manners when she's disappointed. Yes, our fairy princess here is very disappointed. She wants to be the star of the show. Mommy tells me the whole family will be coming and their eyes will be on me. And Daddy says I'll always be his star. My brother Stuart says at least now I won't get too big-headed. This does not make me feel better. On the morning of the concert, I wake up to a surprise. It's snowing. Just what a winter wonderland needs. Maybe it won't be such a bad day after all. Fairy princesses know how to take a frown and turn it upside down. Daddy and Stuart shovel the driveway and warm up the car. Mommy packs up the goodies she made for the bake sale. I put on my velvet dress and my big furry snow boots. Then I do my vocal warm up. A fairy princess is always well prepared. It takes twice as long as usual to get to school because of the snow. When we enter the Great Hall, I hardly recognize it. There are fairy lights on all the booths and shimmering ice sculptures that look like statues from a royal palace. Here we are. Everything smells like cinnamon, gingerbread, and chocolate. I have to admit, it does look pretty wonderful. But Mr. Higginbottom looks quite worried. He tells us our guest soloist is stuck in the snow and won't make it on time. I offer to sing in her place if that would help. Fairy princesses are always happy to lend a hand in, in a crisis. He nods at me and he says to put our belongings in the locker room and be on stage in five minutes. I think I might explode with sparkle. She's thrilled. I take off my coat and snow boots and open my backpack. But where are my dress-up shoes? Oh no, I must have left them at home. What a disaster! I can't go on stage in my big furry snow boots. Even worse, my socks don't match and there's a hole in the big toe. Uh-oh. This is going to be the most unwonderful day ever, but there must be something I can do. After all, I am a fairy princess. I peek out of the locker room and see the arts and crafts table. Suddenly, I get an idea. I dash over to it and I grab some purple poster paint and a brush. I quickly paint a ballet slipper on each sock. I have to paint my big toe purple as well. It's not perfect, but it will have to do. The concert is about to start. We walk out on stage in a long line. When it's time for my solo, I take a few steps forward. Mr. Higginbottom lifts his baton smiles at me, then raises an eyebrow. There is a trail of purple footprints all across the stage. 
some of the singer's giggle. I feel my sparkle beginning to disappear. See those purple footprints? My face feels hot and my ears start burning, but the orchestra begins to play and the music is so pretty. I look up and see all the smiling faces and all the twinkling lights in front of me. Suddenly, my sparkle comes rushing back. I take a deep breath and I sing and I sing and I sing. After the concert, Mr. Higginbottom gives me a big high five. Daddy says I stole the show, and Mommy hugs me and helps me into my snow boots. Stuart, her brother, says my painted socks were a pretty good idea, but they didn't fool him. We buy hot chocolate and cinnamon buns, yum. Then we bundle into a sleigh. The snow is still falling. The jingle bells make their own music, and we all sing a sleighing song together. It doesn't get more winter wonderful than this. I guess the sparkliest things can happen when you least expect them. And that is the end of our very fairy princess who likes to sparkle in the snow. I might mention it's illustrated by Christine Devenir. I thought the illustrations were quite interesting. Well, now we have just a very short little Christmas story, and this is called Merry Christmas from Biscuit. This is about a little dog. The story is by Alicia Satin Cap Capuselli, and the pictures are by Pat Shores. And here is Biscuit. There are other stories about Biscuit, but this one is all about Christmas time and Biscuit. Merry Christmas from Biscuit. Guess what time it is, Biscuit, said the little girl. Woof, woof. It's time to celebrate Christmas once again. And Biscuit says, woof. Hold still, Biscuit. A picture of you in front of the Christmas tree is just what we need. And he says, woof, woof. Silly puppy, that candy cane belongs to the tree. Woof, woof. Tonight we'll sing Christmas carols. Let's take a picture by the piano. And Biscuit says, woof, woof. See the little kitty sitting right next to his little girl? Oh, Biscuit, I can hardly wait to sing carols, too. As he holds a music sheet in his mouth. Here are the stockings hung by the chimney with great care. Woof, woof. Oh, no. How did you get that stocking? Oh, woof. Looks like he's poking his nose to see if he can find something good to eat in there. We need to leave gingerbread and milk for Santa Claus. And Biscuit agrees. Woof, woof. Funny puppy, that gingerbread is for Santa. It looks like he wanted to taste of the gingerbread boy himself. Ding dong. There's the door, Biscuit. Let's go. Woof, woof. Merry Christmas, Grandma and Grandpa. From both of us. There's nothing better than celebrating Christmas with our family, our friends, and a silly little puppy like you, Biscuit. Woof, woof. Smile, Biscuit. Merry Christmas. And see, they're taking a picture of them all sitting together under the Christmas tree. Merry Christmas. Woof, woof. So this is a nice little album that you can use to make pictures of the family that you love. And that is the end of our story time for today. I just have a few announcements that I would like to make of some ongoing things here in the library. Um, the Friends of the Library are having a bake sale 
These are it's a pie sale actually, and they've been baked by Chef Dana, who is quite famous. He's referred to as the Cake Boss. It's twenty dollars for a pie, and you can order them at the Upper Chichester Library. The orders have to be in by December twelfth, and then you pick it up at the library on Wednesday, December the twenty second. You can choose from. The apple pie, cherry pie, bourbon pecan, chocolate pecan, pumpkin, caramel apple, and sweet potato pie. Then Friday, December the 17th, um, we have our last Wool Gatherers virtual crochet class with Hannah, and she will be showing you how to make a ribbed cow neck, as you can see this young lady is wearing. It will be streaming live on our library's Facebook page when you go to www.facebook.com Upper Chichester Library. The kits, by the way, are free. You can come to the library and pick up a kit for the cow. Then we also have one more art class with Miss Teresa, and um, that would be on December the 18th, and the time will be uh, let's see. Let's see. It's on Saturday. That would be on the Saturday. I'm assuming it's around 10 or 10:30. The uh, crafts, the materials for making the crafts, are available here at the library. They're free to anyone who comes in and picks them up. And she again, she will be on Facebook Live for fun and creative craft. And just go again to www.facebook.com Upper Chichester Library. So I hope you will participate in some of these activities and enjoy them. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Goodbye for now.